Soviet Jews, I think it's a great place to start. Uh, <laughs> when I was a kid growing up in DC, thanks to your dad amongst many other people, but, but certainly uh, um, helpful from him you know, advocating to help Soviet Jewry. Um, How did you know about that? Uh, because I grew up in DC and I'm Jewish. <laughs> you probably like <laughs> held the same signs, the yes. same in yes. front of the Soviet embassy. Yes. And yeah, yes, okay. free Soviet Jews, and this was because your your father. But I didn't have to do much. I th the hardest I had to endure was having um, Soviet Jews sleep on the floor. When I'd wake up, I'd be my mom would be like, "Here's someone." Um, I, I just had to negotiate around like B'nai B'rith women in their in their <laughs> mumus. It was <laughs> terrifying for my adolescence. Um, but I couldn't get over that your your father was held hostage. Yeah, you know, in all the times I've ever done interviews, this has never come up before. Your re your the failings of researchers that you have back there. <laughs> it's just amazing. Yeah, my dad my dad was held hostage by the Hanafi Muslims in uh, I was in high school in in seventy uh, seven, um, along with about a hundred other people. It wasn't just him. It was yeah. They took over the Benabrith building where my dad worked, the Islamic Center and the DC, uh, the district building. And then we have, got a picture of him from your website. Oh my god, oh my god yeah. Because there was a great story on it that you wrote about his yeah. uh, food issues. Yeah, he had <laughs> food issues. We all, what Jews don't. Um, my dad, my dad, um, he had no palate except for salt. So he was the quintessential Jewish eater. He could taste salt. He could taste two flavors. One of them was salt and one of them wasn't. And, um, <laughs> and that was him. And, and uh, yeah, it was, it was a frightening thing. And I grew up in that household trying to get to other food groups. And, <laughs> yeah. But the other thing about my dad, which about the Hanafi thing, was this is a true story. I have to tell this now because you yeah. brought this up. I got to go with it. Um, I was in high school. I was a junior in high school. And the, you know how you'd like, you know, you're, I was trying to be the class clown. I was acting out. There was a girl named Margaret Bernal who had big eye, big traffic light eyes. I, is that anyway. the only thing that were big that you noticed? What? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, yeah, I was, I was pure. I was pure. <laughs> But I, I just had a crush on her, and it was, it was sixth period English. And so we had this substitute teacher, and I was like, I tortured the substitute. You know how that goes. You know, like a class clown ruining the class for the substitute. And I went so far that I knew I would be in trouble the next day. I knew this. So fifth period, I'm in the student newspaper office, and the phone rings. And it's my older sister, and she says, you got to, I'm coming to get you. There's something going on at the building. Dad's been taken hostage turn on the TV, I'll be there in 10 minutes. And I turn on the TV and sure enough, it's on all the DC's channels that they've taken over these buildings. And um, I, I went to my sixth period class and, and the, the head of the English department and the teacher were both there waiting to punish me. And I mean, I think, I think I was probably suspended. I mean, it was just, they were so furious. And I walked into that class and I swear to God, there, there are students who will still remember this who went to high school with me. I said- BCC. Yeah, BCC. I said, I said, Ms. Gallagher, I'm really sorry. Um, my dad's been taken hostage by a group of crazed religious gunmen. That's amazing. I have to go. You're so. <laughs> and she, she and Mrs. Hurd, they followed me down the hall, screaming at me. The kids in the class were like, "Man, he's really gone over the." You know? You know? So anyway, I came back on the Monday after. Obviously, on the Mo everyone knew what happened a few hours later. But I came back on the Monday. Nothing was ever said, ever. <laughs> That's it was, yeah, it were was, you grateful to him just for getting I held was, hostage? I was almost grateful to the terrorists. <laughs> I, you know, I mean, uh, you know, it was just, I, I'll, I'll never, I mean, I said it, even as I said it, I was like, you really shouldn't be joking about this. <laughs> but I, I couldn't help it. It was just there. So. And your mom went back to school uh, while you were in college at the same time. And she, I understand, graduated Phi Beta Kappa while you were failing out. It took me five years to, she beat me out of college. She's, <laughs> she went back to school. Um, she dropped out of Hunter University, uh, Hunter College here, um, when she was in her 20s to get married. And she went back, um, and she was like taking nine, 12 credits a semester, and she beat me out of college. It took me five years, five years and two summer sessions. It was kind of humiliating. Well, it's humiliating, but it's also humiliating about the education system because at the same time, you're getting more bylines than hired writers, I believe, at, at the Baltimore Sun. You were interning at the Baltimore Sun. I find all this research into the esoterica <laughs> of my life to be unnerving. <laughs> Just wait. And inappropriate. <laughs> 
can't we just do the usual, like, <laughs> why'd you kill Stringer Bell shit? I mean, yeah. <laughs> Thank you.